Albany copy in the city there. I went and got this. I got a medal for my work in the community. Now it says I'm a local hero. The thing was, I wanted a hero when I was a kid. That's what it was all about. This is what I said to them last night. I wanted a hero. I wanted someone to come and save me. But nobody came and saved me. When I was this tall, my dad would pick me up and throw me against the wall. And man, I wanted a hero. I wanted someone to come into my house. I wanted someone to kick in the door and come in there and say, hey, get your hands off that boy. Leave him alone. Now, my mother was just as bad as my dad. Boy, you guys all look so serious now. Man, I've changed your day, haven't I? But, um, I mean, some of you are probably experiencing things like this. I hate to think that you are. I hate to think that you are. And that's why I've done what I have done. That's why I wrote that book. Because we need heroes. You know, I needed a hero. I needed someone to come in and stop that stuff from happening. Nobody stopped it. You know, while I'm talking about my dad, he did that to me. That's, that's actually my... I mean, my family's a real mess. That's actually my stepdad. And uh, no one stopped it for him. When he was a boy, he got beaten. My mother, too, you know. Sometimes we get the idea it's just the men that do this stuff. Woo! Should have met my mom. She was wild. She was a pretty scary lady. She was more violent. She was just more clever with her violence. She was more sneaky. Uh, so, yeah, but I wanted someone to come in and stop all that. That was scary, man, growing up. They were crazy, absolutely crazy. They would be at either end of the house yelling at each other. My mum would be at one end, or my dad would be at one end, and they would be throwing things, plates, cups. My mother would be over there and she'd be throwing lemons, whatever she could get her hands on. You know, and my dad would be there. My mother would be over there. They were absolutely, you know, one time, my dad, because if he wanted to do anything around the house, I was the one that he called. I had a brother and a sister, but he didn't call them, he just called me. And yeah, this is where, you know, I did martial arts for years. And people think, you know, I, I had to go to Japan to do this test. This fifth arm test in Japan. What you have to do is you have to sit on your knees. And you, you're facing an audience. They're all sitting there looking at you. And then a guy comes behind you with a, a wooden sword. It is softened up, it is covered. <coughs> And he's not, he's not going to make any noise or anything. He's just going to bring it down on your head. Now everybody, a whole audience is sitting in front of you. And of course, they're sitting there like this. Oh, come on. He's going to get hit. He's going to get hit. He's going to get hit. You know, they're hoping you're going to get hit. So what you have to do is you have to close your eyes. Just really settle. And when you get that feeling, when something's not, you know, when something's coming at you, you get a feeling. And then you have to dive forward so the sword doesn't hit you. And I did that, and people, oh man, you've had some good training. Oh, my training came from my parents. It didn't come from any master in a martial arts school. That's because I was survival as a kid. <laughs> you know, when my I would do work with my dad, so he'd be nailing up on the on the wall, and, and he was never good at that sort of stuff. He was terrible. He'd hit his own finger. He'd he'd bend the nail. It just wasn't his skill. You know, so he's there, and the nail would go, and then I would be holding the piece of wood. And just hold it like that, bang, 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 and if he, that nail bent, he got angry, of course. So he'd swing out with the hammer. So that's where I got really good at moving out of the way, man. He was crazy. You had to get out of the way of him. One day, he wanted to fix the lights. Now, we had a two-story house, and one part of it was open plan, so it went right from the bottom all the way up to the top. And at the top were these lights. He wanted to fix the lights. When I got the ladder, to me! I'm upstairs. Yeah! Come in! That was how he called me for work. Down I go, go into the garage, bring the ladder through the house, stand it up, hold the ladder. So here's me underneath, I'm holding the ladder. My dad goes up. He's got shorts on, I can't look up. <laughs> So, so here he is, he's up the top and he's fiddling around with the lights. My mother's in the kitchen. Now, 
my father's here. The kitchen's over here. So my mum walks out of the kitchen. She's been, oh, she's doing something in the kitchen. She's wiping her hands on the tea towel. She comes out. She's looking up at my dad. She looks at me. She looks up at my dad. She looks at me. <laughs> I can't, you know, I'm not sure I'm, I'm hearing correctly here. She's telling me to push the ladder over with my dad on it. I'm looking at it. No. Because she's not the one who get in trouble. It's me. I'm the one who's going to get in trouble. So she's telling me to push the ladder. My dad's up the top. He's feeling the ladder starting to shake. You holding the ladder? <laughs> it's me underneath. So they were crazy people. I mean, my dad, he really thought he was tough, man. He thought he was sport, you know? He'd walk around like this all the time. <laughs> you know, and, and you looked at him, the, what you looking at? You know, and that was it. He was off, you know? Come here! <laughs> you know, sometimes he'd shave his hair off and that just to make himself look more aggro. Yeah, he thought he was pretty tough. <laughs> One time, though, he wasn't that tough. One time, he wanted to do some work outside. Timmy! Downstairs I come, we go into the garage. He goes over to the garage door. <laughs> He's in a foul mood. He's always in a foul mood. He was a really unhappy man. He drank a lot, you know, did all sorts of things. But, man, he was just unhappy. So he comes over to the door. And he pulls the door up real hard. Too hard. It goes up. And it's a roller door in the garage, you know these roller doors that go up into a coil? So it goes up and it goes boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Drops. My dad is standing underneath it, looking out the world like this. It drops on his head. Thunk! Falls behind him on the ground. Bang! Now I'm standing behind him. I'm a teenager. I'm standing behind him. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Because I wasn't laughing loud, but man, I guess because I knew that would have hurt. And the garage door had a dent in it, so it was like that. And my dad was so staunch that he couldn't say ow or anything. He just stayed like this. Then he looked behind him at the door. Then looked back out at the world. I don't know who he was trying to impress. We lived out in the country. The only thing in front of him was a paddock with sheep in it. <laughs> it wasn't like the sheep were going, man, <laughs> he's tough. You know, the sheep weren't doing that. And so my dad, he turns around to me and says, oh, don't worry about it, go inside. Because <laughs> I know he was sore. So I went inside and started laughing. My dad, he goes inside, he goes to bed for the rest of the day. <laughs> but you see what his anger did though, eh? His anger busted the door, and that door was going to have to be fixed. And that's the thing with anger, man, it destroys. <laughs> you, know, you know, holes in the walls and stuff like that, it destroys. And that's the house I grew up in. That's why I wrote that. How long did it take you to make sure Gay come up with all the ideas? Uh, that one was quite fast to write because I have been, I, would, I started Warrior Kids in 1994. And um, I did it because there was nothing else in the community, you know? I, I, could, I knew there were kids out there who had the same experiences as me, that were being hurt at night. So, see, that's why I didn't do so well at school, because of everything that was going on at home. I mean, my dad had a knife to my throat at one stage, telling me he was going to kill me. Maths didn't seem so important. I didn't know if I was going to be alive the next day. So I didn't do so well at school. But uh, in 1994, I started worrying kids. So that's where that book came from. It came through that. And basically, I wanted to put something out there that kids could link into and talk and get, get help, you know? And have someone to talk to that they could trust. That was the other thing. Give them something different from a pop star. You know, we have so many pop stars. You guys have so many pop stars, rap stars, uh, movie stars, sports athletes. But we are the, the, the ones that are like doing work out there in the community. We are the ones who are being role models and examples in that sense. 